So I saw that there is nothing better for man than to enjoy his work. Because that is his lot. That word lot means calling, for that is his call from God. And uh, best thing you could ever be given, according to Solomon, is for a man to enjoy his work. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse uh, 19, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 19, it says, Moreover, when God gives a man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with gladness of heart. Would you help me finish this statement? Thank God it's Friday. You didn't say, thank God it's Monday. I get to go to work. No, we normally say, thank God it's Friday because I'm through that curse, and that terrible day. Now I get to party. I get to have some rest and relaxation, some R&R. <laughs> but can I tell you, that is the wrong idea. That is a wrong philosophy, is we ought to have joy and happiness in our work. Thank you for that amen. Because work is a gift of God. And this is what Solomon says. This is the greatest natural gift we could ever have is if we can have a job and love it, you can't get, life can't get better than that. And for a good reason. Because we're going to spend more time at work than almost anything else other than sleep. They'll be tied for first place. Sleep and work. So you know what? Since you're going to spend so much time in work, you might as well enjoy it. And so work is one of the great gifts that God gives us. Now, I don't know about you. When I was a new believer, I misinterpreted the Bible. I thought, maybe you thought the same way, I thought work was a curse. Anybody ever thought it was a curse? Because, you know, when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, God says, curse is the ground and painful toil, you'll have to work. And when I read that, I thought... Oh, man, work is a curse. So I thought, and there's a lot of folks who think it's a curse. They're running from it as much as they can. But work is not a curse at all. Uh, let me show you this. Go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, because we need a, a good theology of work and what, what God intends with work and, and what he wants to do in work and how you could be happy at work. So here in Genesis 2... And one of my problems, again, I, I just I misinterpreted the passage. I thought that when Adam and Eve sinned, God says, from now on, you're going to have to work for a living. And that's the way it is. So I thought that prior to that, they didn't work. So I looked at work as a curse, as a punishment, as something evil that came upon man because they sinned. But that could not be. Let me show you this. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Let me ask you, did God work? So if work is a curse, does that mean God was working in his own curse? See, work is not a curse. In fact, are you ready for this? Work is a divine action. The first thing we find God doing in the Bible is working for six days he works so that means by working God honors work and says it is a God thing it is divine it is spiritual it is not worldly it's not secular it is part of our lot or calling in life so work is actually good it is godlike so work couldn't be a curse if it was something God himself did then on top of that, look at Genesis chapter 2. This is before the fall of man. Genesis 2 verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to what? Work. Come on, let me hear it. Work it, Work it and take her. What's the first thing God did for man or gave man? He gave him a job. This is before the fall. This is before the sin. 
So work cannot be a curse. So if the first thing God does in the Bible is work, and God makes us in his image, that means we ought to be like him. So since the first thing we find God doing is working, the first thing God gives man to do is work. So work is godly. Work preceded the fall of man. So what is this thing called uh, the curse that, that at least I was misinterpreting? Here in Genesis 3, here's the curse. This is after man, man sin, sin. Genesis 3, 17. To Adam he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you through painful toil. Didn't say through work. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for, for you. And you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground since from it you were taken. That was the curse. It could not be work because God gave work for man before he sinned. But what God is saying is man, the one thing that I gave you to do, it's the one thing that will frustrate you the most. I gave you the gift called work, but now because of your sin and your separation from me, the work is going to look like a curse. And you're gonna be unhappy, you're gonna be frustrated, you're gonna go through painful toil. You'll have pain, anybody in pain at work? How about, do you have a few pain in the necks at work? Come on. That's painful toil. And you're just like, oh. And the fact that we all look at Monday, Monday blues. Oh. Gotta work. What, what is it? That's the curse. But we're redeemed from the curse. Jesus Christ came to set us free. So that means he wants to set us free and bring us back to the way it was at the beginning, which is not painful toil, but enjoyable, fulfilling work that makes one happy. Do you see this? This is the gift of God. And that's God's intention, is to give us this kind of work. The problem is, verse 19 says, by the sweat of your brow you will eat food. Sweat. Where does sweat come from? Comes from the body, okay? Now, what is he saying? From the sweat of your brow. In other words, here's your problem. You're gonna be working with all of your physical strength. And your physical strength will never be enough to make you happy. We are not to work by our physical strength, but we are to work by the divine strength of God. God. 